Over the past five years, I've worked on and off on a project that has long been a dream of mine. A sandbox game where you can make your own platforming levels, just like Super Mario Maker, but with Kirby instead. I started this project when I was still learning the basics of programming, and could barely write anything at all, let alone an entire game. But each time I came back to this project, it matured more and more into something truly amazing. This is going to be a strange video, but I really hope you enjoy this journey as I go through the story of Kirby Maker. To start off this journey, the year is 2017, and I am a young, aspiring programmer. Like many, I decided to learn Python, as it seemed like a simple option to learn programming, and I quickly became obsessed with it. It wasn't long before my aspirations began to grow, and I started to think about big programs that I wanted to make without even understanding most of the basics of programming, or Python itself. But I didn't let that stop me. The thing I wanted to make was games, and at the time I was playing Super Mario Maker on the Wii U quite a lot. Remember the Wii U, with the screen controller thing? I actually kind of like the Wii U, but I'm getting off topic. Anyways, since Super Mario Maker was on my mind so much, I thought I would combine it with one of my favorite video game franchises, Kirby. This idea seems so perfect, as both Mario and Kirby are fairly simple 2D platformers. But before I could do that, I had to actually make a platformer first. So I downloaded Pygame, a Python graphics library, and started work on one of my first games, if you could call it that. So welcome to the first version of this idea, simply called Kirby. Except there is no Kirby, and the jumping isn't really jumping either. Yeah, it's hard to call this a game at all but it would be an important starting point in this journey. If you're wondering why the resolution is so terrible, it's because I thought making the resolution low would make it look retro. So yeah, that's the level of brain power that went into this project. By the way, the code is utterly terrible. It's messy, the variable names are completely arbitrary, it's just comically bad code. But you gotta start somewhere. Alright, let's move on from that pile of trash onto a slightly less terrible pile of trash. Introducing the Kirby Engine. This name will be appearing a lot from now on, by the way, so definitely get used to it. Anyways, we are still dealing with a very low resolution, but on the bright side, we actually have Kirby this time. And there's proper jumping, and there's even a debug menu, which is nice. This is also the first time that multiple game styles are supported, being Kirby's Dreamland and Kirby Squeak Squad. Eventually, we'll get more games, like in Super Mario Maker, but for now, we only have two. Overall, this is a pretty big improvement from a teleporting cube. The next and last Kirby project to be written in Python is simply called The Kirby Engine. I know, how original. Even though the title screen says otherwise. This is the first Kirby Engine to feature UI, even though it doesn't really match the Kirby style. And it's pretty bare bones. We are also finally taking baby steps towards high resolution graphics, but we're not there quite yet. If we press create, we're dropped into a Kirby's Dreamland map, and look, an enemy. But it gets better, because this is the first Kirby engine to feature real-time editing. Because in the past, all of the maps were just images with collisions manually programmed on top of them. Yeah, it really took three projects to get to this point. But things will only get better from here, because the next Kirby engine will be the first one written in C++, and with it, a whole slew of benefits. And that first engine to be written in C++ is called the Kirby Engine HD. I bet you're starting to notice a pattern with the naming scheme, and the incongruity with the title screen. Now, at this point we are starting to get to the more advanced Kirby engines, so things are going to get more interesting, quite quickly. In this engine we are able to finally access multiple levels, via the super basic menu. And inside the levels, there are more things to play with than ever before. From semi-solids to ladders, there are lots of things this engine has in store. There are even doors that lead to sub-areas. You can really see at this point that things have gotten a lot better, but that will only continue to improve as we move on to our next engine. Do you want to guess the name of it? If you guessed the Kirby engine, you'd be correct. This engine is the first Kirby engine to feature Kirby's Dreamland 3 as a game style, and the elusive slopes. This engine does have a bunch of weird graphical glitches though, for whatever reason. So the sprites have black lines that clip in and out of existence, which is kind of annoying, but whatever. 
Now, the next Kirby engine is actually the first one not to be called the Kirby engine since the beginning. Instead, with a much more consistent name, this is Kirby's Dream Maker. Yeah, I know that it's a pretty terrible looking logo, but if you look past that, this project has quite a bit in store for us. If we press play, we are greeted to a very fancy looking level, with enemies, slopes, and animated tiles. But what makes this project so important from the other five before this is that it features the first proper editor. This editor allows you to toggle between adding blocks and enemies, and it has a bunch of other little features that make the process of designing and testing levels so much quicker and more enjoyable than ever before. But this isn't the end yet, because the next project I'm going to show you is the latest Kirby engine. And to say that it's a major improvement over everything you've seen thus far would be a major understatement. With the exact same name, this is Kirby's Dream Maker. Alright, if this isn't a pretty snazzy looking title screen, then I don't know what is. What's cool is that every time you restart this game, the title screen starts on one of four different supported game styles. Kirby's Dreamland, Kirby's Adventure, Kirby's Dreamland 3, and Kirby Squeak Squad. Yeah, this game supports all four of the game styles that you have seen so far. But we will get to that more in a minute. For now, if we press play, we move on to a level selection screen. Now, if you are paying attention, the Kirby Engine HD also had a level selection menu, but it was very rudimentary compared to this. Let's click on an empty level and press edit to go into it. Alright, welcome to the editor, which is fully featured this time around. Now the level itself is really small, but if we go to the edges of the screen, we can change both the width and the height of the level really easily. Alright, there are currently no blocks placed down, so like the previous engines, I can scroll through the tiles and place them down at will. But now, I can also press this button up here, and open up a whole menu where the tiles are laid out, and pick the ones that I need. This means making levels can be even faster and more intuitive, especially with the ability to middle click on blocks to get the block, like Minecraft. As soon as I want to test or fully play the level, I could press play, and we exit the editor. Pretty neat, right? Now there are a bunch more settings we can mess around with, from changing the game style, to the background, to even taking a picture of the level itself for the level preview. But even with all of these new things, somehow it feels as if something is still missing. You've seen that every project that I've taken on so far has added something new to this everlasting project, and has become better every time, but it always fell short of my goals. And I guess that's where this project ends up as well, falling short. Perhaps every project we take on ends up falling short of our dreams. Now some of you might laugh at the fact that I've redone the same project so many times over the years, but really, I think this is the best way to master your skills. This project has taught me to persist and to follow my dreams, no matter how far away they may seem, and perhaps that's why Kirby has been such an inspiration to me. Now this latest Kirby project I made in mid to late 2021, making it almost two years old. So last year was the first year that I didn't work on this project since I started programming. But perhaps I should change that. I have improved a lot as a programmer in just two years, so I guess that I will just leave it up to you guys. Do you want to see this project make a comeback? If you do or have any other suggestions or questions, leave them down in the comments below. Thank you guys as always for watching and for your wonderful support. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Bye bye